Peace TV English, the solution for humanity. Spread the word, oh man. Spread the word of Islam. Oh, fortune won. Paradise must be won. Paradise must be won. Each day and each night. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ومن اتبع هداه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers Our topic for today 17 benefits of lowering one's gaze Insha'Allah we will share this together. These are 17 benefits we can reap if we lower our gaze. And before we delve to the topic, we should know that we are slaves of Allah, servants of Allah. So we have to abide by His law and always conduct our life and lead our life according to His commandments the ibadah in islam it's so unique and the concept of ibadah the concept of worship in islam it has no parallel in any other belief or set of belief or any other religion because the concept of ibadah or worship in islam it covers every aspect in one's life it governs everything in your life because Islam is a way of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one ayah in Surah Al-An'am, Surah number 6, ayah 162, says, Say, 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 indeed, my prayers, my sacrifice, my living, and my dying are all for Allah, the cherisher of all that exists. So this is the concept of worship in, in Islam. The concept of worship is not only the rituals, five prayers, fasting Ramadan, doing Hajj, the five pillars. No. As a matter of fact, the scope of ibadah, the scope of ibadah in Islam is so broad. Everything you do can be converted into ibadah and can be considered as an act of ibadah. Unfortunately, many of us, their understand, understanding and their concept of the ibadah is so narrow. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul inna salati. Say my salah. This represents the rituals. Wa nusuki, my sacrifice. Wa mahyaya, my living. I have to lead my life. I have to abide by the law of my Lord throughout my life. Live according to Islam. What Islam teaches me, I have to abide by the law of Islam, the Sharia. Wamamati, my dying, are all for Allah. Lillahi Rabbil Alameen, the cherisher of all that exists. So this is the concept of ibadah in Islam. Your eating, your drinking, your working can be considered as a'mal, acts of worship. If the motivation if the motive, if the intention is for pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, one day the Prophet ﷺ said to the Sahaba, even when you satisfy your desires with your wives, even the fulfillment of the biological needs can be considered as an act of worship and you will be rewarded for it. You'll get ajr. You satisfy your desire, you fulfill your biological needs, and on top of that, you get hasanat, good deeds. When this 
the Sahaba, they heard this from the Prophet Sallallahu they were shocked. They were shocked. They said, how come a Prophet of Allah, one satisfies his own desire, and he will be rewarded on top of that? The Prophet Sallallahu said, what do you think if he satisfies or fulfills his needs, the biological ones, in a haram way? Will he be punished for that? They said, yes. He said, the opposite. It's true. The opposite. When, if you satisfy yourself in the halal, that also you will be rewarded for it. So you can see now the range or the scope of the concept of ibadah is broad. So everything can be converted into acts of worship. As a matter of fact, one third of our lifespan is for sleeping because the day is 24 hours. Eight hours every day you sleep. So one third of your lifespan is sleeping. So how can you convert the eight hours of sleep into active worship, into ibadah? If you go to sleep with the intention, having the niyyah that, Oh Allah, I am going to sleep to gain strength so that I will worship you. So while you are asleep, the malaika, the angels, are writing hasanat for you because of the intention. And you took wudu before going to sleep with the intention that you will get up for tahajjud. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Dhariyat, which is Surah 51, Ayah 56, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have neither created yin nor humans except for my worship. So Allah created us for the ibadah. Do you think Allah created us for the five prayers? The five prayers will not take more than one hour. How about the remaining 23 hours? Unless we understand the right concept of ibadah, that means everything in our life. Because Islam, my dear brothers and sisters, is a code of life. It teaches you everything. When you go to sleep, you say your dua. When you get up from your sleep, you say your dua. The ibadah. You go to the toilet, you say the dua, you come out from the toilet, Islam teaches you what you say, you start eating Islam with you, teaching you what to say before eating, after eating, leaving your house, what do you say? You entered your car, what do you say? Coming back to your house, what do you say? It is a way of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ghafir, which is Surah number 40, Ayah 19, because he is the one who created us, so he knows us. He says, يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنِ وَمَا تُخْفِ الصُّدُورِ Allah knows the fraud of the eyes and all that breasts conceal. So Allah knows خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنِ The eyes, the lustful looks, the fraud of the eyes, Allah knows it. When you look at a woman, when you look at a woman, Allah knows what, that look means, Allah knows it. The eyes can talk. No need to speak. Through the eyes you can communicate. So Allah knows these messages, these encrypted messages. He knows them. Allah ya'lamu khainat al-a'yun wa ma tukhfi sudur The Prophet sallam, one day, he told the Sahaba, Beware, avoid sitting on the roads. They said, O oh Allah's Messenger, we cannot help sitting on the roads as they are our places where we have talks. The Prophet ﷺ said, If you refuse but to sit, then give the road its right. They said, What's the right of the road? He said, the rights of the road, lowering your gaze, refraining from harming others, returning greeting, and enjoining what is good, and forbidding what is evil. These are the rights of the road. The first right he mentioned, lower your gaze. Don't look to the haram. My dear brothers and sisters, every one of us complains that his iman or her iman is weak. 
we read the Quran, we don't feel the impact of the Quran. We don't feel the influence. We want to cry, we cannot cry because our hearts are so hard. Our hearts are so hard, maybe harder than the rocks. May Allah soften our hearts. Ameen. My dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers, stay tuned. We'll be back, inshallah, after the break. We are not addicted to dawah. Addiction implies a short-term fix. One doesn't need to get into the zone to talk about Islam. You do dawah because it is a natural result of your commitment to Allah. If you don't talk, people are going to walk. The most effective combination in the propagation of true Islam is found in Dawah Ilullah. Join me, Arib Islam, as we go through Dawah Ilullah only on Peace TV. Follow the tips to make the task of Dawah result oriented in Dawah Ilallah every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 11:30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 6 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Thursdays provide. In Britain, we are facing one big problem, that are you Muslim or British? The space to talk. In India, back home, they ask, are you a Muslim first or Indian first? And we Muslims should know how to reply, how to turn the tables over. The place to knock. Why Trinity cannot be regarded in that sense, Father, Son and Holy Spirit? The opportunity to ask. But even if you agree that what the Christians say, that he was crucified, so if Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, died for three days, who controlled the world? That means even God died? The freedom to unmask. So there are various ways which we can prove the argument to be wrong. Let's meet Dr. Zakir every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. <laughs> Verses, awakening contents. Unlock your hearts. Let us start to reflect and interact with the glorious Quran through simple and interactive grammar exercises. Explore the secrets of success that exist in the blessed lines of the Holy Quran. Using what you recite every day and night, learn 250 words that occur 55,000 times or 70% words of the Quran. Let's understand the Quran. Let's join Dr. Abdul Aziz Abdul Rahim in. Let's understand the Quran next on Peace TV. Welcome back, my dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers. We were discussing before the break the Prophet, وسلم, he told the Sahaba to give the road its rights, and he mentioned the rights lowering the gaze, refraining from harming others, the passage by returning the salam, the greeting, enjoining what is right, and forbidding what is evil. These are the rights. Those who are sitting on the pavements, watching the passers-by, first of all, they have to lower their gaze. A woman is passing, a Muslim is obligated. It is fard to put your head down. Not you look at the woman, because we are going to know the benefits of lowering the gaze. So looking at the woman is a sin. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, They should lower their gaze. Lower their gaze. 
So he said, you lower your gaze. Second thing, don't harm the passers-by. Don't crack jokes about them, criticizing them, backbiting, slandering. That's what people do. Those who are sitting idle, they don't have anything to do. Returning the greeting, someone passes and gave the salam, we have to reply and give the salam back and say, Alaikum salam wa barakatuh. Then, enjoying what is right. If something is happening which is wrong, those who are sitting, they have to stop it. You command what is right and you forbid what is wrong. These are the rights of the road. This is in Bukhari Muslim. And another hadith which is in Bukhari only. The Prophet ﷺ said, Oh, young people, whoever among you can marry, should marry. Because it helps him lower his gaze and guard his modesty. And whoever is not able to get married should fast as fasting diminishes his sexual power. Let us reflect on this beautiful hadith. What is relevant to the gaze? Only this portion. But here the Prophet Sallallahu where he said, it helps you to lower your gaze. He's encouraging the young men and women to get married. Because we know the problem of the youth and young people, both girls and boys. Their problem is desire. The desire lusts. And the ulama, rahimahumullah, taught us that the shaitan has two way or two means, two methods he uses to attack us. Either through the points of our weakness, desires, the desires of the flesh. And for men, women. This is the weakness of any man in front of a woman is very weak. He's very weak. He throws like butter. Very weak. As the Prophet ﷺ said, the biggest fitna which I fear most for my ummah, for the Muslim men, is the woman. Nisa. A woman smiles at you, finish. Finish. So it's better for you to lower your gaze. So either the shaitan will attack you through the desires, shahawat, lust, or another means or another way he uses is doubts. He tries to confuse you and he puts doubt into your mind. How can I overcome my desires and the doubts? How to get rid of the doubts and how to overcome my desires? In order to overcome my desires, I need to have iman, taqwa, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how I will counteract and overcome and bring my desires under my sway. How can I get rid of the doubts? By the ilm. I have to equip myself, get myself qualified, learn the deen, then the shaitan cannot play with my mind. So here the Prophet ﷺ, he addressed the young one, the young people, encouraging them to get married. And then he told them the fruit of the marriage. Because the marriage will help you to lower your gaze and guard your modesty. When you are married, you will not look at women. If you fear Allah, why should you look at women? You have your own wife. And you can satisfy your biological needs in the halal way. And you will get ajr, reward. So the marriage helps you to overcome your desires and also to lower your gaze. Having said this, my dear brothers and sisters, also we'd like to share together that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for the ibadah, as we know. And we want to know that ibudiyah we have to actualize in our life. Everyone has to actualize has to bring in reality the ubudiyah, the servitude. 
We have to be true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. True slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because ubudiyah indeed is an honor. Because you are a servant of Allah. Because a human being, either he is a servant of Allah or he is a servant of many things. You cannot be free. If you want to be free in the real sense, in the real meaning of freedom, worship Allah and Allah only. Don't worship Allah, you will be a slave for many things. You'll be a slave for the money. Money will be your God. Women will be your God. Fame will be your God. Many people, they are running after fame. Their target is fame. I want to become a star. Star. This is how they fool the women. Will make you a star. The reality, they are using them, exploiting them. When the wrinkles started to appear on their faces, they tell them goodbye. They will look for another one. And she becomes a slave. A slave. She cannot do whatever she wants. If she is a model, she has nice figure. She cannot eat what she likes. Because that she will put weight on. She cannot enjoy eating her favorite dish that her mother makes. Because they are always monitoring her weight and everything. She's a slave. Teams today, football teams, read in the newspaper. This team bought this player. They bought buying and selling. The players are sold. So you're not free. So if you want to be free, worship Allah. Then and only then you will become a true free man. Because you are only a servant of the Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And that is indeed an honor. So the ubudiyah, which we have to actualize and bring into our life, has 20 Five levels. Twenty-five. Simply because there are five senses. Hearing, seeing, tasting, touching, and hearing. These are the five senses. And we have in Islam five rulings. Five rulings, haram, which is prohibited, the lawful, makruh, disliked, fard, obligatory, sunnah, recommended, and halal. So we have five rulings in the sharia. And we have five senses, five times five, twenty-five. This means that we have to apply the five rulings of the Sharia to every one of our senses. We come to the eye, there is haram look, there is makruh look, there is fard look, there is sunnah look, and there is halal. And you have to do this for all your five senses. All the five senses. Then and only then, if you fulfill all these and achieve all the five ranks of the 25 ranks or degrees or levels of Ubudiyya, then and only then you will be considered a true servant of Allah. So you have to work hard to actualize and bring the ubudiyah into your life. All of us, or many of us, know the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Where he mentioned, he said, Ta'isa Abdul Dinar, Ta'isa Abdul Khamisa, Ta'isa Abdul Qatifa. Woe to him, the worship of the dirham, the worship of the dinar. 
Have you seen anyone worshipping the dirham and the dinar? Prostrating? No. So what does it mean he's a worshipper of the dirham and the dinar? His aim, his goal is only money. So then you become, your God is money and you worship only money. Woe to you. May Allah save us from going astray. My dear brothers and sisters, keep begging Allah and asking Allah to keep you on the right path and to strengthen your iman. Till we meet, insha'Allah, my dear brothers and sisters, in the coming episode, fi amanillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Spread the word, oh man. Spread the word of Islam. Oh, fortunate one. Paradise must be won. Paradise must be won. Each day and each night. Through darkness and through light. Cry it out to the Spread the word, spread the word of Islam. <laughs>